Chapter 12. A Name, A Name. On the last day of the year, Lord Akiyama returned to the castle, and it was again filled with life, but not all returned. I gave no thought to the missing ones, but envied the heroes that could brag about their experiences on the battlefield. There was much talk of when and how Lord Takeda Shingen would lead his armies to Kyoto in order to make himself master of Japan. Once, when we were listening to some samurai discussing this, Yoshiroki said, They are like ravens waiting for corpses to feed on. Why do you say that? I asked, surprised at the bitterness of his voice. They would like to see Japan ruled from Kofuchu because they are from Kai themselves. They have no thought for anything other than power than gold. They are greedy like ravens, and if Lord Takeda wins, they will treat Japan like those birds do the corpses on a battlefield. I nodded sagely, but could not help protesting that I wouldn't mind becoming the ruler of even the smallest village myself. You would like a name other than Taro? He smiled, uh, jokingly. Have you ever heard of a samurai named Taro? I countered, for it was very true that I wanted another name. Lord Takeda's name as a child was Taro, I have been told, Shidaki said. I did not know that. I was a little surprised that Lord Akiyama should have given me Lord Shingen's childhood name. This news pleased me, for I was always looking for omens of good fortune. Do you think I could beg Lord Akiyama for another name, I asked, mentioning that once he had said I would, he would soon have to give me another. I would not push my luck too far, Yoshiriki shook his head. To gain the attention of the great, you must handle them like fishes you want to catch. It takes even more patience to land a lord like Akiyama Nobutomo than an Ayu. I cannot help laughing at his comparison, although I did not doubt its appropriateness. Oh, I thought to myself, I'll should be ever so patient, but I shan't miss my chance when it comes. Too much patience can also lose you your fish. The chance did not come for a long time, and I remained Taro when others my age and even younger had begun to be considered men and were given names appropriate to their ranks and stations. The following summer, Lord Akiyama raised an army again and was away for a good part of the year. I was left behind, and this time Yoshidaki was among the gaily bannered squadron of cavalry, riding a little black mare that had been a favorite of us both. I waved to him, but kept a, turn, a, turn, a stern expression on my face so that no one should guess I was near to tears. That night after the army had left, I decided that, should the same thing happen on the following year, I would commit harakiri as the only honorable way out of my disgrace. It was easy for me to come to this decision when its accomplishment was a whole year away. I felt as brave as if I had done it in already, and before I slept that night, I imagined to myself the sorrow that Lord Akiyama would feel when he, informed me, when he was informed of my sad and desperate act. As soon as Lord Akiyama returned, I would ask him for a name, but I would have to choose the right moment. It would not do to trouble him. That might make him angry. No, the time to ask would be when I had been sent, by, sent for by him for some reason or another and could judge him to be in good enough humor not to mind. I spent all summer rephrasing my, my re request over and over again. Sometimes my demand seemed so reasonable that I did not doubt my eventual success for it. Had not Lord Akiyama already said it was time that he gave me a new name? But then black clouds would enter the blue sky, and in my imagination, Lord Akiyama would not only refuse me a name, but punish me for my impudence by sending me back to the stables. I longed for Yoshidaki's return. I needed his advice and his friendship, for although the others were not unfriendly to me, I felt isolated among them because of my accursed child's name. Taro. Oh, I hated how the, name, the sound of that name, and how desperately I wanted another. When the army finally returned, I rushed to Yoshiroki, and not even given him the slightest chance to tell of his adventures, I blurted out my problem. Though he had taken off his armor and helmet, and was still wearing his sword. He glanced down at one of them, then at me, and then drawing out so I could catch a glimpse of its glittering blade, he said half sorrowly, It has killed several men. There are times now when I wish myself back to before I became Yoshiroki, when I was only a boy. I did not have any sympathy for what he had said. Scarcely understanding, I replied, You cannot become a boy once you are a man. Yoshiroki took off his swords. He had two like a real samurai, but the second one was very short and more like a dagger. You are right, it cannot be done. Only in dreams can you return to what you once were. He smiled bitterly and continued, And though you, 
Though you can return, you are like a ghost, powerless and unable to change what has happened. You can only experience once more what you would have well, often prefer to forget. You are a samurai now, I said bitterly, and I am nameless, for Taro is like a grain of rice. There are so many of them that they cannot be counted. Once Lord Akiyama spoke to me. It was after the battle. He asked about you. Yoshiroki paused and smiled teasingly. What did he say, I demanded. Please tell me. He asked what I thought of you, Yoshiroki said and grinned. I told him and that is all. But he remembered me, I said eagerly and then repeated, he remembered me. You didn't ask me what I replied. Yoshiroki put his arm on my shoulder and we both laughed. When I finally got a new name, it came about in the most natural manner. I was called to Lord Akiyama's chamber, and as usual, I entered and knelt just inside the room, awaiting my master's order. What was your father's name, Taro? Lord Akiyama asked. I cannot remember, my lord, I whispered, and then, taking courage, I added, but his family name was Murakami. Murakami. Lord Akiyama tasted the word and then repeated it. Murakami. That will do. Murakami Harutomo. Lord Akiyama smiled. Will that satisfy you? He asked. I bowed while silently repeating the name Harutomo. The name was constructed from the place name Haruchika, which Lord Akiyama ruled and which sometimes served as a nickname among other lords, and his own name, Nobutomo. By giving me a name so closely related to his own, he showed me that I stood high in his favor. You do not answer. Is the name not to your liking? Lord Akiyama knew perfectly well that my silence was out of respect, and I had not dared utter a word. It is a good name, a very fine name. I muttered and then bowed, then bowed to the floor, I said, and I thank you for it. It is a precious gift. But will it please Lord Takeda that I should be called Murakami? He has long forgotten that name, Lord Akiyama laughed. Do you not think that the future ruler of Japan, the Kai Shogun, has more important things on his mind than the name of a boy? I did not want to offend, I whispered, realizing that I in indeed thought Lord Takeda Shingen right might remember my name. The center of each man's soul is the center of the world, Lord Akiyama said, laughing. Even a beggar thinks in his cupped hands he holds the universe. Lord Akiyama took a sword from behind him. Its sheath was plain, but it was no weapon to feel ashamed of. It is customary to give a gift to someone when he is given a name. Take this sword. It was worn on the battlefield and belonged to a brave man. I felt my face flush with pleasure as I knelt in front of my lord and received the sword. I held it in both my hands, and then bowing, I thanked my master, who dismissed me with a kindly nod and a wave of his hand. I am Murakami Harutomo. I shouted as, I, as soon as I caught sight of Yoshiroki. A good name, my friend grinned, and before sunset there will be no one in Iida Castle who has not heard of it.